Hey everyone, welcome back to the more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my rant stroke thought of the day. And funnily enough, it's about another journalist. But this time I'm not going to be ranting for a bad reason. I'm ranting for a good reason. You all see the video that I did a couple of days ago about that rancid little weasel of a man as Oliver Holt and his ridiculous piece about Newcastle United, where he used the words bone saw and body bag. Absolutely horrendous it really was. Everybody mentioned it. Even people that weren't Newcastle United fans, fellow journalists even pulled him up for it and said he was absolutely ridiculous with his rhetoric. He followed it up with another article, I think, as well. Put more pressure on how after the, the defeat of Liverpool, which he was called out rightly so by likes of Luke Edwards and a few others as well. But this time I'm going to talk about a journalist for the right reasons. And funnily enough, it's a it's a kind of a it's a guy I've, I've clubbed in in the same group as Oliver Holt for, for a number of years, really. I used to watch the two of them on a Sunday Sutton great show that was when it was on on Sky. Um and I used to say Martin Samuel was very like Oliver Holt, but he's he's really changed uh, my opinion on him. I don't know what's happened to him. Maybe he's, he's mellowed with old age. He's maybe matured a little bit. He's he's come off his high horse a little bit, but he's he's certainly sounded a lot more objective um, rather than subjective in this piece that he's wrote. He's, he's titled it "Riches Meet Red Tape," and and even the opening line in this piece. I mean, I haven't read the full piece. Um, Hands up, I haven't, but I've seen the screenshots, and that's what's prompting me to do this little reaction video. Uh, I think, you know, if, if you've got a subscription to the Times, I don't do, uh, but I'm sure it's a fantastic piece, and I've got to give Martin Samuel credit for this if it, this is anything to do with the tone of it, just from this little snapshot. But this is the opening line here that he's wrote. The richest club in the world, that's a dig at Oliver Holt, who keeps saying that repeatedly in his piece. That's the shorthand for Newcastle United, except they're not. They're only as wealthy as the dead hand of the Premier League permits. Wow. Sometimes words just cut right through, don't they? And that is absolutely superbly written and articulated by Martin Samuel. That's exactly the problem I've seen. Other people talk about this. You know, other YouTubers like Sir True Geordie, friend of the channel, he's talked about this as well. People keep throwing this label. And Newcastle United being the richest club in the world. We're not the richest club in the world. We are the richest owners in the world. But they've got a pair of FFP handcuffs attached to them that they cannot access the funds it's like having a, a golden goose locked away in a cupboard but you don't have the key that's basically what's happening with ffp and newcastle united at the moment and that dead hand of the premier league is a great reference and, and, and very very well descriptive or described by by martin samuel the premier league didn't want this takeover to go through they tried everything to stop this takeover going through this takeover was the worst nightmare for that cartel of of those clubs that wanted to fuck off and leave the Premier League to go join the Super League. You know who they are. We're talking about Manchester United, we're talking about Liverpool, we're talking about City now, Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal. They were in that mix of clubs. The last thing that any of them wanted was Newcastle United being bought by this huge financial power and another Manchester City happening, another Chelsea happening. And that's exactly what FFP looks like it's become. When this was brought in, they made loads of noise about it. It was to stop clubs going under and it was to stop, you know, rogue owners and all this other kind of stuff and everything else. It's not doing any of that at all. It's it's preventing competition. It's stopping teams challenging the, the elite super clubs that have the multi-million pound deals, that have the huge 70, 80,000 seater, seater stadiums. It's stopping clubs competing with them. Everton is a great example of that. We've had our runnings with Evertonians on the channel. Listen, you know, most of the Evertonians that come in the chat are actually quite calm and, and logical, but some of them are a little bit hysterical. But listen, I'm on your side. You've been absolutely kicked in the dick by this 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 whole FFP thing. It's disgraceful. You know, Everton was something like what were the twenty grand over the limit, the hundred and nine thousand pound loss limit, and in that was them building a new stadium to try and increase their revenue and bring more people to the ground. All of that stuff is in there. You know, in the 20 odd grand over, they were warned by the Premier League repeatedly 20 odd grand over. What happens? Bang, 10 point deficit, right? Other clubs talking about wanting to sue them. Manchester City, 115 fucking charges, and nothing's happened. Apparently, Nottingham Forest are going to be the next ones to get thrown under the bus wheels and probably have points docked off them as well. Again, Manchester City, 115 fucking charges. What's happening to them? Nothing. Chelsea, what's happening to them? Nothing. And do you know why? Because these teams are part of that cartel, the marketable, sexy clubs that the Premier League whore out to the world to get in oodles of cash from other people. 
They don't want other clubs to challenge the status quo. They don't want Everton up there. They don't want Newcastle United up there. It was their worst nightmare watching Newcastle finish in fourth last season. They don't want another fairy tale story like Leicester City. They were having kittens when Leicester City won the Premier League. That's one of the most amazing accomplishments by any football club in my lifetime. I was nearly crying and I'm not even a Leicester fan. They don't want this to happen. They just want that little cartel of four or five or six clubs, the richest clubs, to get all of the money, to get all of their own way. When they vote these things through, they want to, to basically bend it to their whims. Another example of that, look at the way they treat Jurgen Klopp. This guy is an utter shithouse. He's on the sideline screaming in fourth officials. He tried to get a 17-year-old boy sent off for a fair tackle um, on Monday night. He's a fucking disgrace. What happens to him? Nothing. Look at Gary O'Neill. Gary O'Neill gets shafted by six or seven horrendous refereeing decisions that even Stevie Wonder could see were wrong. And he just turns around and says something in a post-match interview. He gets nailed against the wall. It's a disgrace. This whole league is rancid. It really, really is. And everybody's starting to see it for exactly what it is. It's corrupt and it stinks of shit bigger than that dinosaur turd in Jurassic Park. And fair play to Martin Samuel for writing this piece so objectively in terms of calling this out. You know, he talks about in there as well, he talks about how, you know, the Manchester uh, United saviour, Sir Jim Radcliffe, you know, he's made his fortune from petrochemicals and nobody's challenged him about that. But when it comes to Saudi Arabian wealth, it's like the Death Star's landing. You know, we can't let them do anything. But then these big clubs, these elite clubs, these horrible shit houses that try to leave the Premier League, they're using the Saudi Arabian vehicle to jettison their dead wood to get those big wage earners off their books. And they're taking that money back of Saudi Arabia and reinvest it. Liverpool are a prime example. They get shot of Henderson, Junior Wijnaldum, Firmino, and they then use that extra finance to go bring in Sobotsly to bring in Endo, to bring in, you know, Nunes, all these other players, you know, and they're happy to use Saudi Arabia when they want to Manchester United, moving Ronaldo over there, getting his wage off the books. The director of Manchester United flew over to Saudi Arabia for talks, possibly to get rid of Varane, Casemiro, players like that, maybe even Martial, those kind of players. And Martin Samuel rightly so calls these fuckers out and says, could you imagine if Dan Ashworth did the same thing going over there to talk about getting a loan deal for Ruben Neves? The world would fall off. Look at the state of the way the clubs were behaving when this rule was up for a vote in terms of the Premier League clubs not being able to loan in between their own clubs. What they failed to understand was so many clubs in the Premier League have owners who have ownership elsewhere. Crystal Palace have got it. Manchester United have now got it. With Sir Jim Radcliffe. So they were probably pushing hard for it, not even realising that their own financial saviour who's coming in has links to other football clubs like Nice, which he's probably going to exploit as well. Thankfully, that got kicked out. So Newcastle United do have an option to use the Saudi loans in this January transfer window. We're now quibbling. As Martin Sammy rightly says, we're not the richest club in the world. We are quibbling over a £5 million loan fee for Calvin Phillips. Yes, I know a lot of that might be the, the, the deep kind of dive into the, you know, the, the, the whole deal in terms of the obligations to buy and everything else. But that's where Newcastle United are. Quibbling over a five million quid or even a 40 million quid fee for a player is fucking nuts. For, for owners to be as wealthy as, as the our owners are and us not be able to spend to compete with the rest of these teams is absolutely rancid. It really is. As Samuel rightly says, people are, are waxing lyrically about this open Premier League title race. It would be a shite sight more open if Newcastle United weren't hampered by financial fair play, much like a lot of other clubs are as well, Everton being one of them too. They've got a lot of money that they could spend. Aston Villa could open the checkbook a bit more. All these other teams are, are, are on tenterhooks. If you, you're talking about having to sell your best players to get investment. People are now talking about us selling Bruno Guimaraes for 100 million to invest in three players. What world are we living in? Well, we're owned by people who are worth hundreds of billions of pounds that we're talking about selling one of the key cogs of our team to fund three or four players. It's fucking ludicrous. It really is. You know, and what's going to happen? Are Manchester City going to buy Bruno? Because there'll be another 116th charge or 17th charge because they're not doing anything about them. It's completely rancid. It really is. I sometimes wish that those clubs had just fucked off to that Super League and the Premier League was just the rest of the teams right now. Arguably, I would say it would be, it would be less corrupt than it is now, but it's absolutely rancid and a massive credit goes to Martin Samuel for being so objective and calling this out. Again, he highlights the Saudi Arabian investment in Heathrow. They've been investing in the capital for years. This isn't a political channel. I'm not going to turn it into that. There's better people than me doing that, Jonathan Pye for one. But, you know, nobody talks about the Saudi Arabian investment with the UK government. They're never taking the task about it. The little old Newcastle United all over the place, you know. It's, it's honestly the Premier League 
right now is absolutely horrendous. It really is. And this financial fair play thing, I think we're all seeing it for exactly what it is now. It's just a vehicle to restrict competition and for anybody to try and grab that brass ring for a Manchester City to come out of nowhere and do what they did, for a Chelsea to be bought by a Russian billionaire and go from being Ken Bates Chelsea to that Chelsea. You know, they don't want that to happen. They just want the big, sexy, glamorous names to sit at the top of the table and everybody else to eat crumbs at the bottom. And it fucking stinks as shit. And the more journalists that Martin Samuel have called out, the better. Oliver Holt, maybe you should read that piece and see how a real journalist writes and well done to Martin Samuel for doing that. Huge credit to him. Go check it out, guys, if you haven't already. If you don't have that subscription to the Times, you know, the pieces doing the rounds in terms of what I've just read there on social media, it's well worth a look. And I say the more journalists who write objectively about this situation, the better, in my opinion. But that's my rant done for now. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. We always like to hear from you. If you like this kind of thing, smash subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. All free content, never more. Just like the rant you've watched, as well as previews, transfer videos, everything else. But if you do want to give a little back to the channel, there's an option just down there for you less than two pound a month and it helps us bring you this great content i'll be back with another thought of the day and a rant i'm sure pretty soon because uh, this ffp thing ain't going away and uh, it definitely needs to be looked at in my opinion because it ain't helping anybody but the rich catch you later everyone cheers bye-bye